Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Retail Growth Podcast. I am super, super excited to have on the amazing Hortez Lejanti. And um, she's coming in all the way over from America, from the US. Mm -hmm. And I'm so excited to have her here with me today. I've seen her on LinkedIn. If, if you're on LinkedIn, definitely check her out. She's amazing articles there. But I fell in love with this book, Align. <laughs> Um, it's absolutely amazing as you can see there's tabs on it because I use it when I'm coaching my clients and Hortez has an amazing way of explaining and using metaphors in how she talks about her own journey to alignment but also her journey with her clients and I, I love the way she simplifies how to find that purpose and alignment within yourself and to help others find that as well. And it's really clear even in her book and herself, Hortez is a really giving person and she really does help you understand things that you feel are quite complex, but really bringing them down and going, what is it that makes me excited? What is it that makes me happy? What makes me get out of bed in the morning? And all of these amazing things I personally have gotten so much out of, but I'm sure other people out there can definitely resonate with this today. So obviously I'm in the retail sector 15 years and retail is all about emotion. And we know that when we go into a store, we get happy, we get excited, we buy something, we might bring family and friends, we might buy them gifts and we get all that happy feeling. And to me, this book really resonated with me on so many different areas because not even from a customer coming in the door, but from me with my teams and inspiring them and motivating them on the shop floor every day it really rang true because if we're not happy in what we do that reflects in the environment that we bring into that workplace every day so I'm really excited thanks for coming on Hortez I'm super excited to have you on today and I have so many different things to talk to you about um, and yeah thank you so much for coming on Hortez and for anyone that doesn't know a little bit about you can you just tell them a little bit about Hortez um, and, what, and what it is you do and what kind of your little bit about you I suppose your story in case anyone doesn't know Sure. So first, thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here. And I, I see your, your emotion, you are passionate. And, uh, you know, thank you for having me. I'm very glad to be here. So um, I can, as you can hear, uh, I am from France. I was born and raised in France. I study both marketing, both in Paris and in Boston, in Boston. came back to France. And I took the scenic roads uh, to find my calling. So I work in different uh, large corporate industry, in advertising agency, for media, and as an entrepreneur for almost a decade, until I really, really find my calling at that moment. And I became a full-time executive leadership coach, and I'm coaching uh, CEO and senior executives uh, to try to be the best version of, of themselves. And uh, I moved from uh, Paris to New York. So now I'm living in New York. And I am also an author, working on my second book. And uh, what else? And a speaker. And I try my best to help people to unlock themselves, be aligned, be the best version of themselves, closing the gap between who they are today and who they want to be, who they meant to be. And uh, and moving the leadership, the leadership moving from hero leader to having all the answer to be a human leader, so vulnerable leader. So this is this is what I do, and um, this is what drives me. So I love I lo I love that you found in reading your book, and um, it's. It, it rings true that you really know what your purpose is, what your why is, what your alignment is. And there's some people out there where it says that feel they know their why, but don't really know what it is. So it's very much a buzzword at the moment and people feel, oh, you know, um, I enjoy what I do. But how do how do people, I suppose, match their values with their purpose? How do we go about figuring that part out? You begin at the beginning. And uh, and uh, at the beginning, it you need to work on it, to time to reflect on it, mm -hmm. and to think about what is important for you. And I agree with you; it's not easy. Yeah, I, you know, I didn't find my wine in five minutes, as I, as I told you. You know, I took I took the scenic road to come here. So uh, I need I needed a lot of time. And 
And by the way, at the beginning, I, I was not even aware of the fact that I should be aware of the why. You are very young. So that's great that at your age, you're thinking about it. That's great. I think that's great that today we, we talk about it. Uh, but it was a time where when nobody talked about it. And so begin at the beginning and time, take the time uh, to reflect and to think about it and to think what is important for me. If you don't know, go back to your life because th what is, it's amazing how our life shape us. And you have all the answer in your life. So go back to the moment where you were energized, you found energy, you were happy, you, you know, and you, if you will find some clue for it there. So define your why, define what is important, your values for you, and how you want to be remembered as a leader, as a person. And by the way, when I talk about leader, and especially in the book, and that's why I wrote the book, I consider that everyone is a leader mm -hmm. because you are the leader of your life, at least. So everyone is a leader. So, so it applies to everyone. It's not only uh, CEO and senior executives. It's everyone, each of us. Mm -hmm. When you are ready, when you want to begin your journey, okay, begin there. Mm. Yeah, I love that. And I love that, that we're, we're all our own leaders of our own life. And, and I think that's really important because I do think that certainly in, in certain in certain businesses, organizations, you know, everyone matters. And I think sometimes there is this superiority that, you know, people that are at maybe head office level and people that are maybe on the shop floor stock and shelves that they don't contribute to that business purpose or that mission as much as the person in the boardroom which I don't believe in I think that you know that person's stock on the shelves and um, they might only be there a couple of hours a week they might be on minimum wage they will they attribute to that environment that that customer comes into and um, just as much as those people in the boardroom because those are the people that we see every day that we go in and they're the face of the business as I like to say and they're just as important I suppose I've I've obviously coached and, and I've I've worked with loads of different people through the last number of years. And something that kind of I, I questioned a few times was that does our why change, Cortez? Does it change based on our experience? I know in the book you talked about, you know, that we can have trauma happen in our lives, we can have something happen in our lives, things can change. But do you sure. believe, I suppose, that it can change, or do you think that it it's going to there's going to be a thread running through similar but it might we might tweak or things that we want might tweak what do you think um that's a great question i think that no of course nothing is decided one day and 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 don't move doesn't move because you know it's it's a definition of human being we are uh, evolving, we are changing, things happen as we can see, and we can see especially those, you know, those days. So uh, everything can change. And uh, so your why is going to evolve for sure, except if you have, I don't know, except if you, uh, you find your calling very young, for example, and you want to be a doctor and uh, you stick to there and you know exactly what you do. It, it can happen, but even then, I think that, you know, you shape it. It's a bit like, um, you know, an artist who is going to do, um, you know, design um, a statue, see? Yeah. So you have this, this, this block, uh, you know, this block is this rock and okay, and you design it. And, and you, you know, when, when you evolve in life, you can, you know, add, I don't know, a, a nice eye or whatever it is in, in your, uh, on your statue. And so this is, this is what I think. I think it, you shape your why. One day you find it. And, and also when you are 20, it's hard sometimes to find it and life can help you to define it better, you know, uh, a little later and through, you know, through your journey. So I think it's important to, to, to be agile and to say, okay, this is it, but maybe I can even be more specific on it. Mm, yeah, I love that. And and I suppose what feeds into that for me is the, the fear of failure. And this is something that can hold us back. 
a lot. And I seen this in the, when I was reading your book um, in the context of revisiting the fear. And I think you had a story around your horse and got into the water. And, and I loved that. Again, you have a great way of bringing a story and matching the story and how you explain, um, you know, how things happen. And I think it, it's, I'm an Irish person, so Irish people are famous for storytelling. Um, mm -hmm. so, so when we hear a story, I immediately, that light bulb moment comes up and I go, mm -hmm, I can engage in that very easily. So I love this talk about revisiting the fear um, because I think what can happen sometimes is we have a we have a we you know we want to be so um forward focused that we can mm -hmm. make not want to revisit that fear because we feel that by revisiting it we might be reliving it and um, you know but but i think there's a lot to be said in revisiting it from limitations i suppose and holding us back mm -hmm. um do you think there is i suppose a willingness there for people um in business or in personal that we revisit this enough or do you think what do you think comes out of that revisiting the fear you know you, you talk about fear and failure so um failure for me is a gift so yeah. because we we learn from them so we evolve you know it, it as a human being is it's it's that way we evolve in difficult in difficult time so if you are in the middle of something complicated Mm. be happy because you you're moving you're evolving you are going to learn something from it and 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 you're going to change so mm. that's good and you talk about fear yes fear um we we are of course uh, same as a human being we we have a lot of fears and this is normal mm. but the fears can help you if it, it's a driver Mm. But very often at one point, it begins something that holds you back. And you have to face this fear, mm. make, fe make peace with the fear and, and move on. Mm. And because change, what is change? Why, why are we afraid of change? We are afraid of change because we created our brain and we created as hum human being, we created habits. Habits that are, are here to securize for security. It's a security for you, for us, I mean. And, um, and so when we have to change, we have to move from known to unknown. From, and we have to move from you know, your, your comfort zone to I don't know what. Mm. So of course your brain is going to tell you, Oh no 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 no! I don't want to change. You know, it's dangerous somewhere. You are successful here, or you are happy here, or maybe you are not that happy, but you don't know what's going to happen next. So, mm -hmm. and in fact, as a leader, as a person, it's the same. We evolve, and we need, we absolutely need to face those fears, to make peace with them, and and to move and to move forward. And yeah, the, the story in the book is the story of my horse. Who, yeah, who, who was, um, who was uh, so she didn't want to uh, jump river. Gosh! So each time we had the river because I was a, comp a competitor, a horse competitor uh, in show jumping, and each time we had a river, God, you know, she got left, right, by we were fighting. And it was crazy. So I decided, you know, I said, okay, I don't know what's happened. But something happened for sure. And uh, so, uh, you know, I took her, I took time with her. We spent a lot of time together and with water, playing with water around a, a river and things like that. So, and, um, and it took time, but, you know, she changed, you know, because she has associated, you know, the river with something, with a fear. So probably she, she, something happened when, before before me if I'm before you know I was I was um, I don't know I was not aware of it but uh, something happened for sure because she associated she had that river with fear and so taking time with her showing her that you know water river could be something nice also that there is no danger here um, you know make make it possible so after a time she would she was not afraid anymore of river and she jumped very well the river and 
you know that's what that was that was it yeah yeah I think in it in retail anyways we can get quite used to doing the same things okay so we get very used to you know doing the same things and and you find um innovation um doesn't come very easily like other industries so if we look at the tech industry the you know the technology they're very innovative mm -hmm. So retail, mm. we don't see a lot of that innovation. And I believe it's habitual. So if we look at, if I look at the COVID and a lot of retailers didn't have an online store, a lot of retailers didn't have their online set up properly. So they mm. really had to reinvent themselves. They had to mm -hmm. really look at how convenient they were making it for consumers to really actually shop online and how mm -hmm. they were connecting and engaging with people, not just when they came in and visited, but how they're mm -hmm. building a community around their brands outside of their their actual building. Um, mm -hmm. And I think a lot of that was tied up in um, fear, fear of doing things differently because mm -hmm. we got so used to doing the norm and things the way we used to do that mm -hmm. there's a worry if we do things in a different way, will it be rejected mm -hmm. And um, will mm -hmm. consumers buy into it? So it's just your story resonated with me because I thought of those times where we, we'd be going, okay, why don't we do something differently? And you'd be met with that resistance of, mm -hmm. you no. Know, and you, you could have a lot of your team that are innovative, but you find that maybe other senior members of the team are, you know, well, we want to do things the way we used to do them, Louise. So my whole question is, how can we, if we're in a work scenario like that, Hortez, can, is there any way um, that we can maybe get buy-in from people that are still bought into that old way of doing things? How do we change that mindset or can we? Is it up to the individual or is it the case that we can try and um, inspire them or try and get them out of that way of, mm -hmm. of being stuck in those um, ways of doing things in business? Because it can be quite hard, especially if you, mm -hmm. like me, I get quite excited about newness. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people don't have that excitement. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. very rigid and set. Um, mm -hmm. And it can be quite, you know, you have that friction there, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what I hear is um, different things. First, you talk about um, you talk about COVID. I think that as human human being, when you are not obliged to do things and to you know to go to uh, to leave your comfort uh, your your comfort zone, you don't do it. Mm. Why should I? You know, it works that way. And what should I? So there is a fear and and also a lazy, let's say. Um, way of, of acting, thinking, whatever it is. You talk about innovation. If you want to innovate, you have to take risk. But if you want to innovate, you have to be willing to inno uh, innovate. Why, sh why should I, uh, you know, I innovate? Um, do you say that? What should, I, what should I change, you know? If, yeah. you know, there is nobody asked me anything or don't complain. And when COVID ar arrive, happen, we saw here, for example, with Best Buy. Uh, Best Buy, you know, in one minute, what's happened? Mm -hmm. The need of the customer change. So, yeah. as a retailer, well, you 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 follow your customer, or you you follow, or much better, you you are before your customer needs. Mm -hmm. But there, there are new needs, you know. In one day, in one week, everyone needed, you know, computer, you know, technical things or whatever it was. So they, they, they were obliged to, to move. So what did they do? Uh, they uh, opened, um, first they created a pickup, you know, uh, pickup thing, so shopping and pickup, so, and, and increase, you know, the online and delivery. And, uh, and this is a good example because of course they did great and very well. Uh, but they had to adapt. And when you have to adapt, because as a retailer, you know, you, you, as a retailer, you are, you are very close to your customer. So if your customer needs change, you change. Mm, yeah. Uh, and you adapt yourself. So I think it's a very good example. So, you know, make, you know, think about it, you know, how your customer change. Because you know very well your customer. 
when you're with her. You are there, you're the frontliner, you're here, you know them, you live with them. So they change, they move, they, you know, the needs change, of course, because again, it's, you know, uh, as human being, it's our journey to, to change, to evolve and everything. So you, you also should, uh, can, can try first understand them and so go and try to be before them. Microsoft, for example, is doing that also. It's all about, okay, what do you think that you're going to need, but you don't know that you're going to need, you're going to need yet. Yeah. So it's it's all about that. So, and and yeah, because retail, you know, frontliner retailer, it's magic, uh, magic business. So, uh, but you are so close to you know again to your customers. So you just follow that. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Um, and and I think you're right. I think um, when you touch there on on innovation and, and wanting to come up with something, you actually have to want to. You have to want it um, and to yeah. be in that. And, and that actually leads me very nicely into, and, and I loved this. You, you told a story in your book about a busy CEO. And I could relate to this on so many levels. Um, mm -hmm. Having worked with people like that and also actually having been like that as well in mm -hmm. some jobs where I was so busy doing B2Bs, doing events, doing, you know, training, doing this. And I was just laughing reading that because mm -hmm. I was going <laughs> to relate to it so many ways. And then I could actually see, actually, I've seen people like that, you know, mm -hmm. that person that's going 90 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. but they're not really, I suppose, slowing down and seeing mm -hmm. what do I need to prioritize and, and what do I really need to focus on and, and doing 10 things all at once. And and I think the reflective, and, and I did show at the beginning there, the reflective practice and the slowing down. Um, how beneficial is that, do you think? Because I don't see enough of workplaces encouraging managers, leaders, to actually reflective practice. And I feel it's something that should be part of everyone's performance plan and work I think everyone should have a reflective journal in the workplace this is me speaking on my own um, mm -hmm. but I, I really do believe if, if if leadership teams reflective journaled a lot more I really do think emotional intelligence will go up because self-awareness and self-regulation mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. tie into that reflective piece will mm -hmm. really solidify that and put it into practice not just talking mm -hmm. about it but doing what it is we're talking about. So what do you think? What's your thoughts on that word, Tez? It's very simple. Mm. Do it, try mm. it. And in, when you will realize that it's your power, don't worry, you will do it. Because yeah. it's really, really your power. Mm. You know, taking time, uh, to reflect, to take care of yourself, to uh, do your checking, uh, you know, daily checking, as I say, and uh, to to be sure that you you are on, you are on track and, and and you you are aligned and, and and everything is uh, and talking about, and you have to check to check in every day. People don't understand that it's your power, mm -hmm. and when you try it, you understand. It's really your power. You need to refuel. You need to realign yourself to have the, uh, your vision to uh, to be better, to to feel your power. It's exactly like a rocket. You know, the fire. It's a fire of the rocket. So, you know, be sure that the fire is still is still on fire. And uh, uh, you know, if you want, you know, the rocket to uh, work uh, correctly. So this is yeah. This is very easy. Tell them, challenge them, and said okay. Just try, please try one week. Mm. You will see, you will find, you will find your power. It's yeah. very important. We think that you know we are very clever, uh, always talking and running everywhere. That uh, it's very good to be always busy because it's, that means that you do a lot of things. But in fact, just take time, take you know half an hour, ten minutes per day uh, to reflect, to take care of yourself, to exercise, to Reconnect with your body, reconnect with your why, reconnect with your vision, reconnect to, you know, uh, just because, you know, it's, it's, it's your, you're the captain of the boat. 
Mm. As, as a leader, you're, you, you're, you are this captain. So you need to have this vision. Mm. And you need your crew, everyone, uh, to be here with you and, and understand the vision, understand the direction, and, uh, and all together, you know, walk, you know, uh, in, in the same direction. Mm. Yeah. And so, and so to do that as a leader, you really need <laughs> to check that, you know, you are still aligned and your vision is, is still clear. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you actually mentioned it in the book where, where that leader is focused on is where everyone else is going to be focused on. And I think, you know, I think that's, it really resonated. Um, because I think in, in business, we can hold a lot of different hats and we mm -hmm. can be doing a lot of different things. But I think when we are around those individuals that we're, we're going back to that alignment piece. We're going back to that vision piece. And we're, we're really, I suppose, revisiting that, like you said. And we mightn't feel in ourselves at the top of our agenda list, but by making a top of our agenda around those people, it actually has a really powerful effect. And I think sometimes we forget because we're caught up in all of the little small things that those things and talking about that vision and revisiting it. Well, why why are we serving customers in the store? What what is the purpose of doing this? You know, what is it? Why do we like doing what we do? What's the meaning? We want to make people feel good about wearing good clothes. We want to you know bring this feeling. We want to make people feel welcome. You know, we we tend to get bogged down in doing stock takes. You know, operational tasks, all of this other stuff. You mm -hmm. know, where are we sitting in our in our in our sales figures, we can get so caught up in the other admin operational aspects of the business that we mm -hmm. forget what it is we're actually, what's actually putting money in the till. What, why mm -hmm. is it we're actually getting money in the till? And it's those things, that vision is what's actually fueling that to begin with. And I think it's it's really prevalent, I think. And um, yeah, I, I really liked that. I really like that revisiting. And it's something that I've actually wrote it down on my notes that I'll actively start to do more myself because I think even when you start off your own business um, as an entrepreneur, you're doing everything. You don't have a team behind you like I used to have for 15 years. I don't have a big team. It's mm -hmm. me on my own. And you have to really, when you get in those minds where you're like, I'm doing five things, you have to go back and revisit. Well, are they in alignment? Because I think you touched on this in the book about feeling frustrated. Mm -hmm. And those moments of frustration is when we're maybe misaligned with the direction we're going in. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I loved that because I think a lot of people will resonate with that, that they're, what is taking energy away from you and why is that? And that mm -hmm. energy that's been taken out of you, um, what, why revisiting that alignment and am I being misaligned? I think it's, it's, it's really powerful, um, or it is. And yeah, I think it's, it's really, really good. And I think if, if many of us even, even on a Monday or a Wednesday or Friday in our week, two or three times in the week, looked at that, um, I think we'd be happier um, because we, we wouldn't have those frustrations that maybe we're having um, in, in a lot of our day, you know? You know, Louise, I would, I would, I would recommend to do it every day. Yeah. It's not two, two times a week, you know, every day, for example, for myself, I do every day. Uh, I do it on morning and, you know, you need a routine. Yes. Yeah. You need, you need a routine. And uh, so on, on, on morning and I have my routine and on, on evening I have my daily checking, daily questions. So I, I put some question or some decision that because, because you evolve. So I always have that is your tutorial. So did I communicate correctly? Or for example, did I listen correctly uh, today? Or I don't know, you can also put things like, did I exercise? Uh, did I eat correctly? Did I talk uh, to my children? Did I, did I talk correctly to my consumer? Um, customer, sorry, let's say consumer, <laughs> sorry. Um, 
customer, you know, whatever it's important for you. Mm. Because, you know, when you do the work, you know why you do things. Mm. And from there, from your why, your driver, you know, your values, this, this is your tutor. And how you want to be remembered is going to help you to, to shape you know, this. But, but you need work to do that. You cannot answer this question in five minutes. That's not possible. Yeah. That's not true. So you need, you need work. You need to reflect. So sometimes you can reflect by yourself or sometimes you can reflect with, uh, with someone is better. So you can have a coach, a kind of psychologist. You can have a, a spiritual leader. You can have a, a best friend, maybe. Yeah, so best friend can help also. You know, a friend who, who really know how to, uh, how to listen. But, and you can do the work by yourself also. You can journaling every day. You can, you can try to journaling also. Um, and, and it works. And, and from there, after you create it every day, so it's daily checking question or just, you know, sentence. And you reflect to it every day. Because your brain, it's, it's a new muscle, it's a muscle. So your brain is exactly like you want to work, you know, your, you know, your arm, you have to do it every day. It's not every other day because it's yeah. going to take a lot of time, right? And or that is, doesn't go, it, it doesn't work. So you want, you want to, you know, to work, uh, to make it work, uh, to make it working. So every day, I recommend, and it's not long. It's not long. You can take just 10 minutes. I have one of my clients is taking uh, 10 minutes every day and uh, he's stopping in the middle of the day and he's having a cup of coffee by himself, looking at the windows and he puts, you know, um, on, you know, and he, he listens to his best music. So he always have the best music, you know, the same music. It makes you slow down, you know, yeah. everything, you know, you center it again. You can feel how you can realize, or maybe, I don't know, you're very nervous or you realize, oh, I didn't eat maybe, or I didn't drink, or I don't know, I'm cold, I'm hot, I, whatever it is. But you make your, your, your brain and your body slow down. And okay, it, it's a kind of meditation. Meditation is what's being at the present moment. But why you did that? why it's important to do it because you refuel because you make you make your 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 brain slow down and and you know for a while so if you just you know stop the noise mm. ah, you can breathe and and you can see differently correctly but if you make noise always in, you know, in your, in your brain. Uh, and this is what we are doing, you know, all day long, all day long, you know, you have this question, did I do that? No, I have to do that. No, I have to do that. No, I, oh, oh, let me think about that. And, and okay. Ooh, hoo, hoo. see how tired it is. So you will, you will find the power, the power here. Yeah. You will find this power here. And every day you have to find your, your own routine. Mm. You know, each, each person is different. So, this, so my, one of my, my clients did that. Another one um, went, uh, uh, what she did? Uh, oh, yes, it was so funny. So, uh, you know, walking on, you know, of course, walking a remote is, is nice, but you are always, you know, in front of a screen and you're sitting in your fence. This is crazy. So what she did, she did it every morning. She had this routine. She went down. She you know, she 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 went you know around the build you know around the, the street, and come up and said, okay, now I'm at work. So it was you know, and and it was her way to um, you know to stop down or to 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 say you know to your to tell to you to her to her brain, uh, okay, the day is beginning. So now we're changing you know energy and moving and moving forward. And uh, but each person has to find uh, their own way. Again, you can journaling; it works very well. Um, doesn't matter, but it's every day. Mm. Yeah, I love that. And and what comes to mind is, and and someone said this to me before, and I just thought it was fantastic. Um, emotion is motion. So mm -hmm. emotion is motion in motion. So in order to get that 
emotion that energy we have to have emotion for them to come together so the story of her of, of, of that client going downstairs and walking around she's attaching an emotion and an energy to an action and when mm -hmm. that happens something magic happens in the brain because it does mm -hmm. it attaches that then to this different you know different way way of of thinking so I just think yeah I think that's fantastic uh really interesting interesting way to put it into into context I think um I've taken up a lot of your time I've one more question that I, I'm it's a burning question that when I was reading the book as as a leader I've managed lots of teams and it's something that I thought about in the book how can leaders leverage their own personal alignment so we've talked about how we can do that and doing it every day and I think you're right in what you're saying it's like a muscle flexing and we talk about neuroplasticity and all of that and rewiring of the brain and you touch a little bit about that in the book and and it is like a muscle we have to build it so you're right in saying we need to be doing that on a daily thing and making it a habitual habit but how do we get um personal alignment and um, how do we foster that I suppose as collective alignment how do we foster that with with within a team environment um uh, Hortez, for, for anyone listening, maybe that has said, I've done the inner work and um, I have a couple of members of the team that I'm kind of struggling with. Um, mm -hmm. How do I foster that with them? How do I how do I make that happen? Mm -hmm. So, as you say, you begin at the beginning, as we said before. So as a leader, you have to be sure that you you yourself, you did the work. Yes. So you 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 you, you did this, the work of again your why and, and and your alignment and you did the work after to do the work with the company how your purpose your little p can you know match with the purpose of the company mm -hmm. yeah you have to you have to think about it so sometimes it doesn't so you have to ask some question about that um but okay let's pretend that it works so you have really to have that you own your own uh, really, all your body, your 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 brain, uh, and who you are, own it. Mm. So, as a leader, the work is not to the work change. It's not to uh, to to arrive with your team and say you should you have to do that that that. No, it's to listen and to make them to do the work you did for yourself. So you begin a coach. As a leader, you are not anymore the person who needs to have to have all the answer because you cannot. You cannot. Can you predict what's going to, what's going to happen tomorrow? Can you predict? Did you predict the COVID? Did you predict uh, that you know people would uh, struggling with mental health? Uh, do you predict? Did you predict that you will have um, a war, an economic? you know, economic, you know, problem and whatever it is. No, we cannot. Mm. So we have to navigate in that uncertainty. And, you know, the only way to navigate is all together. And ha as a leader, you know, being this facilitator, this uh, coach, this listener to with your team is going to help because make them do the same work so give you know if they need help give help to your to, to your team to do the work to do this work same find the why and see how they can you know connect with the company and it, it will change everything because yeah it will change everything i love that i love that um and, and i love the way you phrased um have their little p their purpose how does that align with the bigger P, the company's purpose mm -hmm. and finding those connections? And as you said, there, it's aligning those what the business is with them and, and really understanding that. And I think do a lot of companies do that at the moment in retail? Not really. And um, for a long time, I think uh, businesses had vision, vision and mission and values stuck on the wall on a poster and it looked great. It was mm -hmm. great for marketing, but um, were people really, I suppose, living and breathing them and, and, and utilizing them every day? The answer really was no for a long time. But I think um, the more we see with what's come out of COVID is, is that people really want a purpose 
in mm-hmm. their job. They really want to feel that they're making a difference. And I think mm-hmm. COVID has forced us now to really go, was I happy? Um, mm-hmm. You know, was I making a difference? And I think mm-hmm. purpose now and meaning in what we do um, and being in there 40 hours a week in a job or 30 mm-hmm. hours a week has mm-hmm. become so much greater, um, Hortez, than it ever has before um, in mm-hmm. life, so I think. Um, I've loved this chat with you. Um, so many amazing nuggets and takeaways that I've heard. And I'm going to do a little blog post on this afterwards for anyone that wants to have a read of it as well. And thank you so much for coming on. I really, really appreciate your time and uh, sharing your thoughts with me today. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thank, thank you, you Louise. Uh, thank you. It was really, really my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. And please check out the book for anyone that hasn't aligned. Um, it's online and I believe the audio version as well has gone has gone up on Amazon mm-hmm. yeah so you can listen if you want to take those couple of minutes out with your cup of coffee looking out the window you can listen in on that on your audible <laughs> or you can have a read at the end of the day and use those reflective questions they're fantastic so thanks a million Hortez and speak to you thank soon you. thank you thank you thank you Louise thank you so much thank you